Good morning, everyone. Today is August 23rd and of 2022. Can't believe it's the, almost the end of August. We have nine more days of celebration. That's almost, it's going to end pretty soon. So, um, and I am Corinne Braxton. Oh, thank you for the hearts. <laughs> Let's see who's on here. I'm Corinne Braxton. Oh, hey, Munch. Good job for getting on first. And Lisa. <coughs> and I am coming to you from Bozeman, Montana. It's a nice sunny day here. Hey, Jan, good to see you this morning. Now, let me just check to see if I can get um, the photo, the stream running on my iPad. I can. Oh, good. Good, I think. Yep. Let me see if I can get the comments now. There we go. Kathy, Munch, Jan. Lisa. Okay, good. I have some really fun projects for you today. Um, so we're, we have a lot. It'll, it'll be rather intense. And I will, at the end, I will photograph these and give you the directions too, because I think you'll want those for making pop-up cards. Pop-up cards are one of my very favorite things to make. I've been making them probably for 20 years. Hey, good morning, Cindy. I used to, um, I'll show you, uh, I don't know how many of you have gotten the paper pumpkin this month. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Every I wish I would have ordered 10 extra. I, I order extra, but they're, I, they're, they're amazing. This is just a regular card from the kit, another regular card from the kit, and another one. They're very pretty, beautiful box. But I took it and made, you get a free set of these gold honeycomb things. And hey, Nancy, good to see you this morning. And I made it into a pop-up card. It was really quite easy. I used everything from the kit except for the designer paper. Uh, that's from uh, Gingham Cottage. And then the cardstock is cr crushed curry. So I'm really into making pop-up cards. Um, and happened. I used to do with my seventh, I, had, I taught seventh and eighth graders uh, reading and language arts. And whenever they did book reports about twice a year, we, I always had taught them how to do a pop-up card. So that's what we're going to do today. So we'll get started because there is a lot. And um, well, maybe I will tell you one more thing. Okay. Celebration, nine more days. Don't forget you can get free things from Celebration booklet plus the you can see the um, and my if you if you're if you don't get my emails, please send me a message and let me know, and I can put you on my email list. Um, these all these ten things, I think are ten. Yes, my very favorite is the aspen tree dies. Love that set. I love all the designer um, embossing folders. I love that dots and um, spots. That's really fun. Anyway, we're that's. Um, that all ends a week from tomorrow. And then we have a new promotion that will be starting and it's called Perfect Partners. That starts on September 1st. And it's all kinds, it's uh, six stamps and dies. Six stamp sets that are in the catalog, both catalogs now, but we don't have the dies. But that's going to, that's going to be coming up. That's the promotion for September. So, Anyway, we will be tuning into some of those things um, and starting next week. Okay, let's flip the camera down. So close your, uh, got my stitches out yesterday morning. Uh, so my hand is my carpal tunnel surgery. I've got just a little scar there. Um, it's not completely healed, but I have to be very careful, which will be a little challenging as I go to New Orleans this week. But um, anyway, we will... Uh, I'm thankful to have it over. Okay, here we go. Turn the camera down. Close your eyes for a second. Thank you so much for the hearts. Okay, zoom in a little bit. There we go. And I just have these here for just for you to see, um, to, for, for me to focus and for you to see. So this is the front of that one that I made. That was a pop-up. I just... And we're, I'm going to show you how to make this box, this little bench that it rests on. This is another one I made just with some leftover pieces. I did a lot of things with geraniums a few weeks ago, remember? And this one um, is a beautiful geranium set. 
and I just made this one, just made it up. It has a poppies embossing folder. This one has little slots, and I'm going to show you how to do both of this, these types of cards today. So let me see now. Okay, we're going to start with, I just trying to, there we go, I can see the comments a little bit. Um, we're going to start with a fall card, Hello Harvest, and I just think this pumpkin set is a smashing one. You know, every year you go like, oh my God, I have so many pumpkins and dyes and do I need another one? But this one is really pretty and it's quite fun. Um, it's called Hello Harvest and the dies are called Rustic Pumpkin Dies. And they have, you can see there's embossing. It embosses, it cuts out the pumpkins, a spray of flowers, labels. We I, I showed that a little bit last week, but it's really a great set. This one's a perfect one to do with a re-inking technique too. Um, so I combined... I combined this. This is the card. This is this is all uh, cottage gingham for DSP, and this is this is from the Give It a Whirl. I think that's what it's called. I, no, I'm not sure. No, it's from the pillow box. Pillow box. Okay, we're gonna. I'm going to show you how to make these, and I have some leaves on the back to write on. Okay, um, you know. Before I actually even start in the card, I just want to show you, you when you make the inside of a, a pop-up card, you make it smaller, a little bit smaller, just a quarter of an inch smaller than the outside. It's not hard. And I actually do not, I'm going to just take, I'm going to take my Tim Holtz scissors. What I don't even measure. I go like this. I just make some slots. I'm going to make this one deeper like that, and this one smaller. I literally do not measure. And then I pop them open like this, and watch this. You're just going to pop everything up, and I'm gonna fold it over. I am having a pop-up class in, um, I think it's October 6th. I just, I love doing, every year I do a pop-up class. They're really fun. And so then you have to really bone fold it well like this. Just like that. And there you have it. And then you have places to put three little characters or whatever. You could put three pumpkins. Just like that. It's very easy. So I hope you'll try it. And then you just fit it inside of a card. Uh, cardstock. Anyway, so I'll have that to, to work on and do another card. Let's bring our components out for this card. And here we go. I will have these measurements typed up for you later on. Probably by one o'clock I usually get things. It takes a while to do everything. Um, okay, but here are the pieces. The front, this is Calypso Coral. When I went to my gingham I thought, oh, that looks like, I think it's pumpkin pie, but it's, and I put some pumpkin pie cardstock next to it. It's not, it's Calypso Coral. And we have a larger side and the whole card is that this is going to be Calypso Coral, five and a half by eight and a half. And you're going to score it at four and a quarter, just like a normal uh, car card. Then we're gonna put our front piece on. This is two and a half by five and a half. And we're gonna use the larger one on the front so two and a half by five and a half. <clears throat> and we will just put, put this on like this. Oops. Just like that. And then we will take, I have a, um, let's see what's here. What happened to my vellum? Oh, there it is. Okay, you have a vellum. I cut this large, this is the largest stitched circle. And I'm going to just put that on. Everything's going to get covered up, so I'm just using some of my really strong glue. And just put that right in the middle, like that. And it doesn't really, it doesn't show. It's not going to make any difference because we're going to put a pumpkin and flowers over that and the words. So we're going to go to the inside now. And 
I have a white card. This is just slightly smaller before. This was eight and a half. So now I have eight and one fourth by five and one fourth. Scored it by four and one eighth. And I mark these lines. I don't usually do that. I just went in about three fourths of an inch. And this is going to be one and three fourths. I'm going to have my pumpkin on the left side. This one I actually made two inches. I was guessing when I did this. So uh, this is a little bit wider than it needs to be, but I'm going to do this one one and three fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to go down about one inch. There we go. And now we're going to pop that up and it comes out like, just pull it out. It's just the reverse. Oops, <laughs> it's not wanting to come out. You can take your fingers and just maneuver. <laughs> it is not wanting to bend. Um, and I use just plain basic white. I didn't use thick on this at all because it would be way too heavy. Um, there we go. I'm going to just close it up like that and Give it a really good crease. And there, there it is. There's our little box. Um, I don't think it's quite as wide as, maybe I didn't cut down maybe quite as far. I didn't go down to those, I probably went down three-fourths of an inch. But it won't make any difference. But that's going to be our pop-up part. And it's going to go in our card. I'm going to, first of all, put this piece um, on, it's two and three-fourths by five and a fourth. We're just going to put that on first, and then, and I have no idea why I have some pencil marks there. Oh, I know what I did. I was, uh, oh, never mind, uh, I was going to cut into those. I'm going to just put this on. We're going to have the white showing. Just put it right on the edge like that. And I want to stamp some flowers right there. Uh, maybe I'll do that right now. Some little tiny flowers while it's still re relatively flat. These are some little bitty flowers. I'm just going to put them like that, like that, and like that. And since we have our our, stand, our ink out, I think maybe I'll just go ahead and do the other parts too. Let's do our greeting. And... Let me see once if we can, I'm going to move that aside. We'll do our greeting and our pumpkin. Okay, we're going to do, um, oh, and I have some pieces here. Um, I just literally, I don't even know what, this is a retired embossing folder that I, I had. I had the piece already in my drawer in my bits and pieces, and I, I just, it, and I cut it down to to fit the uh, the shape. And I thought that was just worked out nicely that way. Um, here's another, you could do um, this one. You are such a blessing. I think that works nicely, but I sort of like that one. So I'll use that. And we're gonna do you are a blessing and a hello. So we're gonna do hello on the front. And we're gonna do you are such a blessing right here on our I better take that embossing because that would not work very well. Okay, take the embossing out and stamp. There we go. And now this is going to go on there. We'll put that aside. We're going to get our little pieces out. On this one, I did a label that we have, you know, the new with the circles and the labels like this and squares. But at this time, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try this one. I tied, I thought this would be really neat. This is a, you know, one of those tags. We've got all different sizes and shapes, they're neat. I really like them a lot. And um, I just thought it would be sort of fun to have that. Um, and I'm going to stamp, I already tied it, and I'm gonna stamp the hello on there. I don't know, we'll see if it works. It did, and that looks good, I think. And. Um, Let's see if we have anything on the inside. Nope, I think that's it. So we'll close up our, this is old olive, and now we're gonna stamp our pumpkins. 
Oh, I'll tell you how I did this. Do you see I, that hole in there? I just slipped that green glitter. This is in color par a parakeet. I just slipped it through and then I took some twine and tied a knot around it like that. Okay, now we're gonna stamp our pumpkins. We need two pumpkins and I'm trying really hard not to get black all over everything. I wish we had black memento in the way stamping up makes ink pads. Um, we don't. This is made by, I don't know what company, but we stamping up cells that we've had it forever. It's a, it's very, um, it is by Tuscano, I think, or something. I'm not sure where, what company makes it. Um, but, okay. There we have our two pumpkins. I love this. This pumpkin set is really spectacular. The lines are beautiful. The definition, the artists have, they've shown us where to color there. And that's sort of neat. And uh, so we're going to set that aside. And we're going to die cut it uh, with our dies. And I've already done that. So let's put our, let's get our card ready to go. Oh, I forgot we have to stamp some flowers. And let me see if I can find a scrap of paper for the flowers. I was doing some die cutting this morning. I was trying to reach my mom. We thought she had a stroke yesterday. She couldn't talk or anything. We took her by ambulance to the hospital. Now I'm stamping the flowers, the bouquet of flowers, the, sweat, the flowers like that. And anyway, they took her by ambulance. I called her after my had gotten my stitches out, and uh, she hardly knew who I was, and she could barely talk. So I got a hold of the place where she lives called Eagle Point, and then they went in and took her by ambulance. The paramedics took her by ambulance to, to a trauma center. Um, she lives in Wisconsin. Got a little ink there, and um, she spent the, my all my sisters and brothers were right close by, and they. They uh, went up there while she was having tests all day. They did, you know, CAT scans and brain waves and stuff like that. This is a little mono adhesive sand eraser. Do you see how I'm just, like there was some ink on there and I'm just sort of rubbing that off. Anyway, turned out she has a, a UTI infection, urinary tract, and which older ladies get apparently. And today she's talking again. They sent her home and uh, she's doing fairly well. well. I mean, she's not doing great, but she's, uh, she's still, she's talking again. She didn't have a stroke. We're so thankful for that. Um, we were afraid maybe something, her, her terrible injury from a couple weeks ago. I said, just going to put adhesive on one side. So we thought maybe her terrible, um, fall and her head wound caused some bleeding, but they say it didn't. And okay, there we have, there's that black again get that off and now we're going to close it up we're going to this is the way I do this I I actually do one side first always then I put my adhesive on this is just regular seal and then I just close it up you can either you can measure it like that it looks just perfect and you can just flatten it down like that give it a good press and it's almost done so we've done our stamping, so now we have to do a little coloring and uh, matting and stuff like that. So I'm going to put this up here, and we're going to put a little adhesive on that. Maybe we can even cover up that. Maybe if I could put the edge right there, that'll sort of disguise that little piece. And I'm going to keep this flat because there's a lot of bulk to the card. Um, this... Dot. This label is such a pretty one. It's from the pillow pillow box die that we have, you know, for making treats. We used it a lot last year. I've not gotten it. I, I love this die, though. I always, I, I tend to go to it. Okay, and now all we have to do is put our pumpkin here and our other pumpkin here. And let's see once I'm going to bring in the die cut pumpkin. And I've already colored one. I'm going to color another one for you. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I need to bring in my silicone mat. 
and I'm going to bring my lens out. I'm going to color the uh, the stem first, and this is crumb cake. One of the hardest things, this is a dark crumb cake. Um, one of the hardest things since my surgery has been able, was been hard, it's been hard to open my blends. Because I can't, haven't had the strength, but um, the therapist that I saw yesterday said it'll come back. And um, anyway, looks like I'm going to cut a little, this is just slightly off. I'm going to just trim that a little bit, a little bit on the bottom too. Okay, now I'm going to take my dark, uh, it's my dark Calypso Coral. Oh, and here's my other, my, here's my, I have two of them, my dark Calypso Coral, and I'm just going to take the fine line, and I'm going to make these, this, the artist has given us the lines for the shading, except I better put my reading glasses on so I can see a little bit better. Let's see once, I'm going to blow that up for you. There we go. And, um, uh, I can't always... Hey, Martina, Linda, Lisa, good to see you. I just glanced over there. So I'm just going going on those lines that the artist provided for us. There we go. And so I'm, this pumpkin, and I'm just going to go a little bit around the edge. It went out of the line there, but it, it's okay. Just on these lines. And I would be a little bit slower if I were coloring without you all watching, but I'm so glad you joined and can see this. Okay, close that up. You always want to make sure you close your blends really, really well. And I'm going to take my pumpkin pie and I'm just going to, oh, well, before I do that, I'm going to take my Calypso Coral. Let's see once we have um, Calypso Coral and pumpkin pie there. And I'm going to put, a, because the paper is, is Calypso Coral, I just want to make sure I have a lot of sort of a, some light areas like this. That's all I'm doing. Just giving it a quick swish. And then I'm going to come in with my pumpkin pie. Sort of swish, swish, get into the, come down from the top. And it's okay if you leave some white. Very. Okay, and then we can come back with our, that uh, Calypso, what, let me see what, this was the light pumpkin pie. I think I'll use the Calypso coral again. And uh, I'm just going to circle these, make little circles, and that'll just help blend it like that. I need a new, I need to order new markers. I have I have quite a nice list running for celebration because I like before it ends I like to um, make sure I get lots of envelopes and lots of uh, adhesives and things like that. Now why do I have the okay? That's the pumpkin. We're going to add a little wink of Stella like that. A little sparkle, and now our flowers. We can just bring those in. And we're going to color them with some, we'll put some pumpkin pie center, that nice orange, dark color, like that. And a little bit of yellow on the, uh, this is light melody. I don't think we're going to use mango melody. This one's dark daffodil. I think we'll use that one. Um, and I'm just... You can shade or not shade. I'm just doing it real quickly. And and if you wanted to put a little bit of highlights, you can use the darker mango. And just use the artist lines again. Just a little bit of depth in there. Wherever those lines are, make use your darker color for the shadowing. And so this is what it looks like when it's pulled, when it's all done. I've I'm going to set that one aside. And I've already colored one. Here it is, and um, and I used some, oh, I used just some real soft Calypso, just the light Calypso on those little tiny flowers also. So now we have our pumpkin. I'm going to, I'm going to put, um, I'm just going to put our pumpkin and the, and the spray together. I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive 
on here. I'm going to use some of my Seal Plus, my really strong. I'm just going to, you could use your, whatever you like to use. You could use your Tombow. Um, and I'm just going to put it along the top. Make sure it's, I better look, have it straight. There we go. So it's not crooked. And so now it's all one piece because we want to pop this up with some dimensionals. And I'll just set these all out of the way for a second. And now we'll bring in our card and we can, we can finish it. These take a little bit more time. They take more paper. They take more time because you've got an inside and an outside. Okay, for our outs, we're going to put this piece on our outside over the piece of vellum. And I'm just going to take a couple of my big, well, I don't need one that, quite that size, but I'm going to take some big pieces that I've cut. I'm going to put one right over that seam right there. And I'm going to put another one right there. I love to cut these. I, told, I tell you that every week, probably. It's just like they're giant sheets that you cut. And um, they, they look like, this is what they look like before you cut them up. They come in, you get, I don't know how many, a lot. And um, they're worth every penny. And then I keep a little dish next to me like this. So, okay, let's see once where we are. It's all sticky now. This is ready. And we can put this on. Get it centered like that. Good morning, Martina. I got a little bit off, but that's okay. I think it'll be all right. We're gonna put the hello on. And so this, this part is, is going to be flat. Do you see what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some adhesive just on that part that's gonna hit the pumpkin. And then I'm gonna put some dimensionals right on the other part. like this. So you can see how there's dimensionals and that's adhesive. I'm going to take those dimensionals off. And there we go. Um, just like that. Hello. I think that looks really pretty. This was our other front um, with that hello. And this is the one with a little bit of pizzazz with that ribbon. And now we can put our we have our card like this. Now, let me get, um, here's our pumpkin. And I've already tied a bow. So we'll just get a little glue dot and pop that bow on. You could tie, you can tie it around that little um, stem too, either way. But we'll snip that off. This ribbon is, um, that parakeet pizzazz is really fun. So you can, you can pull it apart with your, take your pick tool like this. You can just make it shred and you can widen it like that. So it looks like a net. So it's really sort of cool for nautical or if you want to give it, um, it's neat. I really, I like it a lot. I'm glad they did that this year. And um, so now we're going to put our pumpkin right here. It's going to go on this part. So I'm just going to put, I'm actually going to put my adhesive right there. You can do whatever you want. You can put it at the bottom of your pumpkin or you can do it on there. I'm just doing it right there. So I'm gonna keep it turned up like this. Can you see how I'm doing that maybe? So I'm turning it like that. And now I'm going to just I'm going to keep it nice at a nice 90 degree angle. And now I'm going to put it on. And there we go. Oops. I'm going to have to press it a little bit to make sure it, there we go. Um, there we go. And this one needs a little wink of Stella. A little sparkle. Just follow the curvature of that pumpkin with the wink of Stella. And now we have um, a few gems to add. And I'm bringing in these leaf and label amber gem combo. I love these amber gems. They're just gorgeous. These leaves, I'm going to put one plain one on the back just so that you have a place to write like this. Um, where did I put my piece up? There it is. Just a, they come in this craft paper. And we'll just put it like this and we're going to put a dimensional right over that hole on the back we'll just use a small one and 
It's for a little decoration. You can sign your name right there. And then we need some gems on the front. And we're going to put a couple of these. Maybe we're going to put them on this side. Because we have the bow going that way, I think we'll, it'll draw your eye across. Like that. And we'll put another one on. We'll put three in a row right there. There we have it. And we need some gems in our... We'll put some more gems in there, in our flowers, because we can. We can do whatever we want. Um, I think it looks super to have to do extra gems. And maybe we'll put, we can make do one more, Amy, right there. That way we have seven. It's really blinged up, isn't it? Quite nice. There we go. And there's the inside. We can put some gems on there. We'll put some little tiny um, this will probably be one of my cards for my pop-up class October 6th and um, there we have it let's see once there's this card and there's that one which hello do you like better do you like that hello or this one this pumpkin I use more Cajun craze this one I use more of the Calypso Coral and Pumpkin Pie. So you, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, whatever you'd like. So let me see now if I can read any comments before we, oh, hey, Kathy, you love that bling? Yeah, me too, I love it. Um, it's so fun. <coughs> Excuse me, while I take a drink, I was getting, talking, I don't talk so much normally. So I like the, I love this, gingham cottage paper it is you get so you get 48 sheets and it is really terrific and it's a little more expensive but you get so many more papers now our next card is going to be using this i have a class coming up a stamp camp in september and i do kits to go and i have people take the class in person so it's a whole whole day Saturday. We're going to focus on the Lighthouse point stamp set. And then we're going to do some techniques with the fish, one of the fish set and punch sets. But um, anyway, this is a, I love this set. And this is one of the cards that we're going to make in that class. And the class, you'll get a whole package of this in color glimmer paper. And that is in our annual catalog. Let me see if I can find that this lighthouse the pumpkin that we just did that was in the mini catalog and the glimmer paper is on page 139 it's all the in colors sweet sorbet parakeet tahitian starry sky and orchid oasis you get 20 sheets for 12 dollars. it's a it's a great one and that will be included in the class that day of my class so if anyone's interested in the class to go um, if you don't live in Bozeman, I do those. Quite a few kits. This is the stamp set on page 100. And it's a beauty. I love it. Um, I love lighthouses, and I didn't think we I needed another one. I thought cheapers. I just love that the lighthouse set that retired. Do I need another lighthouse? And then I bought it. And I started seeing some cards, and I thought, oh, it's really nice. I have to have it. This one I've cased from, well, it's slightly different, but it's a case pretty much from Celine Kempton out in Massachusetts. She's, um, we, we've been on the same business builders team for years. I hope you can see that's crooked somehow. It's gotten sort of on, not quite following the horizon line. Anyway, I learned this technique from her. So we're this is using the glimmer paper, and I'm going to show you that. So this card is just a regular card, like that. So that was what I, but, so this, all these dies cut out the, these cool things like that. It's very fun. I wanted to do something with that glimmer paper in a pop-up card. And this is what I came up with. I, I didn't know what I was doing, really. So I came up with this, and I kept it really simple, because on pop-up cards, you like to keep the, cover the outside simple so that when you pop it up the inside is spectacular so this is going to be like a shelf and this is the other there are two um 
there's a set of dies in the lighthouse and then there's the ones that you can stamp like this. And so this is what I came up with. So this is what we're gonna do next. And it's it's not real easy, but it's not real hard either. And I did the clouds with the, their, the velvet white paper is in our mini catalog. And I die cut those from the, uh, I bet many of you have the waves of inspiration from this set. We have some really nice dies. You can see those. I tried, I cut birds too, right there. But I didn't, it was too busy. So I kept, I left them off and just put the, the clouds. And uh, so just to keep it really nice and simple, there are some nice words in here. Your light shines brighter than you know, sending love and light. So much thanks. Always here for you. You are loved. All those things are in that set. And so here we go. I'll give you the directions. Let me see if I have to zoom in or is it out. Let me see. And we're using um, the matte, the in-color dots for the decorations. Let's see what's here. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to do our basics first. And then we'll do some stamping. So our basic outside is just a standard top folding card, four and a quarter by 11. And scored it. I score it. Well, we score and score it in half. So this is sweet sorbet. And then next we have a... Um, We have a white piece right there, like it's four inches by five and a fourth. Just going to um, adhere that really fast. So we can just sort of build that a lot of the outside. So it's going to open up top folding. Top folding fun folds are a little harder to do than the si side folding ones. But they're not not bad. So then we have a piece. I cut this already. So it's, this is some of the glimmer paper. And it's ombre. You can see how it is darker here and lighter there. I cut it five inches. It's three and three-fourths inches wide and five inches long. And now I am going to come in and cut, cut, with, cut two inches off. So I've got a whole piece like this. And it just great, the, it has a great gradiated um, ombre to it. So I'm going to cut off two inches like that. Now watch this. This is just so cool, I think. And this is what I learned from Celine. So if we want to have this be our water, we get, and we can have it, we put the dark in the bottom, the light here, and I just, do you see how I flipped it? It was down here, but now I put it up here, and it looks like the horizon in the water. Such a cool idea. I never would have thought of that on my own. And so I really liked her idea. I saw it someplace. I don't know where. Um, anyway, oops, got a little heavy with the adhesive. So I'm just going to put that on right there. And we're going to put the darker one on the bottom. match it up and that is a perfect horizon line i think that looks really neat and um now our inside we're going to put um we'll come back to that in a minute with we're going to put a white inside and this one is going to be 10 and 3 fourths let's see what he's uh, oh i'm glad you needed ideas for this cindy good um the white inside is just quarter of an inch. I've gone quarter inches all the way on this. Ten and three-fourths by four inches. And I scored it. You can, you could, I scored it five and three-eighths. That's, but you can just turn it over and, and bone fold it. So that's what we're going to do. And now I'm just going to put adhesive on one side first, just like we did before. And I'm going to meet, match it up to the seam. There we go. How, how am I in? Let's see. Maybe I better go, go out a little bit. There we go. And um, now we have to do the other side like this. So I'm going to, again, keep it folded. I'm going to put my adhesive on. And you can just close your card very gently like that. And it's just slightly off, but I didn't press it. So let's see if we can 
get a little straighter than that. See, I like the seal because it does you if you you can still remove it with the seal plus you cannot remove it. It is on there for good. Okay, there is our card, and then you want to really really give that a good strong bone fold right there because you got a lot of layers. This card will take a little bit more postage for sure. But there we go. And now we're going to add some um, inside water, and these are Tahitian Tide. This is from the um, Oh, what is it called here? Let's see. It's from the main catalog. It's, um, it's, it's not, I've used, been using from this. It's a 6x6, six six, 2022 to 2024 in colors. And I, I love these. These, a lot of people just don't even know where, how to use these. And they're just, it's so nice to have a set of brights, a set of subtles, regals, in colors. I like them a lot. So I cut two panels, um, one, they're both three and three fourths by five inches. And we're gonna put the Tahitian tides, see they have two sides to them, there's flowers, we're not gonna use flowers. We're gonna use the water down here. And we're gonna put, I cut it so the lines were horizontal. I thought that was sort of a good way to do it. There's a little gap there, you don't, that's gonna be covered up. Took the polka dot side and we're going to do that to make it look like it could be uh, sky, uh, something like stars in the sky. It's really not, that would have been better in starry sky, I think. But anyway, look, look good that way. Now, this we're going to close that up for now. And we're going to do some stamping and all that kind of stuff. So let's get our a piece that we need to build our box is going to be um, three and a half by five and a half. Um, I took a class from Karen Titus on, on um, fun folds. And so I did learn how, I've never, I hadn't done these, bo well, I shouldn't say I'd never done these boxes, but I, these like a little window box or a flower box, I had never done that kind of thing before exactly. So it's scored at one inch, two and a half, three and a half, and five. So I started right here. That's one inch, that's two and a half, three and a half, and that's five. And we're gonna, before we do that, I'm gonna do a little distressing. It hardly needs it because we're gonna cover it up with the rocks. But I'll show you what I did. So I'm just gonna hold it like this and I'm gonna run it. It's hard to do it up. I would normally do it flat. But you see how I'm just getting, maybe I'll put it on here once like, no, I think I will take it up. Uh, on a piece of, like this, this will work, yeah. So I'm just gonna sort of pull it like that. It looks like it's wood grain, doesn't it? And if you do it too much, it's gonna not look so great, but um, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So there we go, that should, that should do it. Now, we're going to fold this up into a box like this. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive, whoops. Right here, one, I want my box to be very strong. I'm going to use my plus very gently. And I'm going to, you know, hold it back like this to stop it. And it's just, I think it'll be great. So now I'm going to just close this box up like that. And there we have it, an, a rectangular box. That is going to, now I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. Oops, sorry about the light, guys. Um... Now, where's that seam? Right there it is. We're going to put the seam toward the back. And we're going to put this in our card. And I'm just going to, so I'm going to put, we want it, I want it to go down like that. Or, well, let's see what's here. I'm going to, I'll do the, I'll do the, um, the back first. Okay. I'm going to put it right in that seam. I'm going to close it up like that. And then it pops down like that. Can you see that? And now it's still open there, so I'm going to bend that back. Oh, I'm using the... I meant to use my plus because I really wanted to stick. I don't want it to... There we go. And now I can just pop that 
back like this. And now we have a rectangle. Oh, I actually did it. I meant to have it. I wanted it to be tall like that, but that's okay. It'll still work. But we're going to have a, a wider one. We could have some rocks and things. We could have some words up there, but it's going to be wider. But it's, it'll be just fine. So now we're going to do some stamping. And we're going to have some rocks and some words and all kinds of things. I'm going to set that aside and bring in our little package of all kinds of goodies. We're going to do our... Um, I already die cut these things. And because it's just so much easier if I can die cut rather than do that on camera unless we have to. Got some twine. I love the in color twine. It's, so, it's really terrific. And some rocks that I've cut out. I've cut out some clouds. I'll put those things right here on, on the mat so I don't lose them. Um, I'm going to show you a fun thing to do. Um, we're going to do our two labels. We're going to do a small label and a large label, I think. Maybe we're not. Maybe I don't have a... Oh, let's see, what, where do I have a label? I think I... But no, here is one right in here. And I have a whole package of things. Um, die cut already. Because I really like that method. I like if I'm having a class. I like to be able to put it into the, like that lighthouse, I would put it into the uh, Stamparatus. So that's what I normally do. Okay, let's do our words first. I'm going to stamp right on, I'm going to stamp on this mat so that you can see. Um, oh no, I'm not. I'm going to get my piercing mat out because it's, these are photopolymer. So that is very important to have a piercing mat then. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Oh, thank you so much, Cindy. Appreciate that. Here's my thin label and my thick label. So we're going to do bring in our uh, there we are, and um, we're going to use our sorbet. This is the sweet sorbet, and I'm going to do the. need to do it in the air. There we go. There's that one. And then the larger one is for the outside. Your light shines brighter than you know. Such a nice saying. Good gift to many people. Um, okay. And I think that's not quite yet. I'm going to leave that open for a second. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to get our lighthouse out. And this is one I would normally put into the Stamparatus, but I can do this, I think, without. But I'm going to get some, I'm going to take my very lightest Sahara sand. And what I am looking for, Sahara sand is lighter than crumb cake. And it's just a, it's just a good color. It's very pretty. I love it with black. I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp off. And now I'm going to put my head in the, in the camera. I'm going to get that top part. I'm going to, I just want to give it a little color, not much. Because most lighthouses are white. So I want to keep it sort of that looking like that. But you can see that it's a really faint color. Now we're going to take our sorbet color again. I'm going to turn this. Let's see if you can all see that. Yep. Yeah. Oops. That's a red ink on my hand, fingers. Um, this tiny piece, I, I made a mistake on the on the very on the first one. So I'm gonna line up the top and then the bottom, and I'm gonna stamp that way, and then peel it off like that. And I think it's really a cool lighthouse. Um, we're doing several cards with that in the class. I'm just going to put a little bit of light in the in the window with my blends. Just a little color right there. Not much at all. And there is our... I think that's done. Okay. Now we're going to 
finished building our car. Oh, we have, we have to do one more thing. We have to do rocks. We're going to stamp some rocks. I've got several rocks cut out. <coughs> Excuse me. The good thing about the way I did this bench this time, I probably won't need so many rocks. But we're going to stamp a bunch of rocks and... Um, and we're going to, I have, <coughs> <coughs> some rocks already finished. And I can stamp a few more. I'm just going to, let me see what's up. Just like that. Peel them off. It's so much easier. To stamp the rocks, to cut them first, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> like this, there are rocks, <coughs> we're going to cut our, cut this in half. And now, <coughs> there we go. <coughs> Just like that. Isn't that a neat trick? We do that on lots of dies, but... I think it looks really neat on this one. <coughs> I'm going to pull this in and put a little adhesive on the ends like that. And we can put this together just a little bit like that. There we go. And if there's, if it's, if you if it's not straight, I can feel a little rough edge there. But right there, I can feel. You can see it too. I just slice it off like that. Okay, now we are going to build or put our rocks on our card. So I've got all these rocks made. I want my lighthouse to go right here. I'm going to use some Seal Plus to make it real strong. I'm going to put my lighthouse on. At first, when I made this card. Before I made this card, my, my thought was to make it with this big lighthouse because I just love that lighthouse with all the die cut pieces. But it was really too big, even for a top folding card. So this one, that's why I chose this one. Okay. And now we're just going to put some rocks on it. I'm going to put a bunch of rocks. Like that. I'm, gonna use, I'm just going to use my, uh, my stamping seal. Just there we go because these don't these will stay on pretty nicely. I'm gonna cover up that light, lighthouse. I'm gonna put some down low. I'm gonna do some that are just don't have adhesive on the top so they can stick out a little bit like this. There we go. And we're just gonna I think we'll just up there. Those are have adhesive on them. I might as well put them on just like that. And there we have our rocks all made. And on this one, I needed so many rocks because it was tall and thin. So this one was much better to have it that way. And you actually could, you could put some words right there. Or you could put more designer paper too. It would be really pretty with another piece of designer, the blue, I think. Okay, let's do our, our outside. So this all, oh no, oh no. I have it upside down. That is the problem. I'll have to take this apart at the end, but do you see what I've done? I've made it, it's all backwards. So don't do what I just did, but I will have to use some undo and, and, and do that. So anyway, so let's do the outside of our card. We're gonna put some clouds and 
I should have checked that. I don't know why I didn't, because that'll be sort of be a harder one to take apart. I'm going to put a big cloud up here in the sky and another one right here. I did use my Seal Plus with that. And I wanted, this is sort of a fun little trick. Um, I, I took about 16 inches of this twine and folded it over in half and tied it in a knot. I think, and I'm gonna actually cut that off because I don't want that knot to be that, quite that long. And then I'm gonna knot the other end Just like that and then I'm going to I'm going to make an S an S shape like this uh, and I'm going to put my words whoops whoops it easy here we go like that now I'm going to put this over it like that I'm going to put some um, dimensionals on that I'm going to just take and take a couple of these longer ones like that. And I don't know if we're going to finish that inside now because I'm going to have to take it, really take it apart. Um, okay, so they'll just peel these off like that. And I'm going to leave that little S shape swirl right there. I'm just going to Put this, I'm going to make it a little wider like that. I'm going to pick it up and now I'm going to put it on my card. I'm just going to center it. Can you see that? And then we're going to put some gems on here. Here's my take your pick tool and we'll put a nice I love the, these in-color gems. They're sort of ombre also. Oop, I lost one there. I'll take it this way. Put one up here. We're going to take a red one, put it for the dot. Right there. Take a small blue turquoise. I mean, it's not turquoise. Tahitian Tide is what it is. Isn't that a beautiful color? I tried to wear a Tahitian tied blouse today, shirt. It's pretty close, actually. Oop, can't get that one off my, it's got a bunch of sticky on it. Let's get a different one. There we go. And there is our outside of our card. And there's the inside. And now our inside needs to have words just like this, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because it's already, we've already gone almost an hour. And I'm going to have to take this off because we don't want our words to be all back. That'd be totally. But you get the idea of how to build a um, a lighthouse pop-up card. So there it is. There's the front. Sort of not nothing spectacular about that. But when you open it up, you get this beautiful lighthouse. So anyway, that is my, those are my two cards. Those are a little harder than I normally do, but pop-up cards are not hard. They're just time-consuming. So close your eyes for a minute while I flip the camera. There we go. And, um, oops, it looks, I don't know how we can get sort of disheveled when we're stamping like that, but we can. So there we have it, everyone. I hope you'll try a, a pop-up card if you've never made one before. I've done, the, I know some people have been in my classes other years when I've done, I, I usually do a pop-up card class once a year. I could do it more often, but. They're pretty time consuming. They take a lot of paper too. So anyway, thank you so much, Martina. I appreciate that. And I hope you all have a good day. And would you please just keep my mom in your prayers so she keep, makes a good recovery from this, this uterine infection that she has. In her head, she did get her, while well, she was at the hospital yesterday, they took her stitches out too. So um, she was able to get her hair washed finally last week. So hopefully she can recover, okay? And I am, and if you would send prayers my way too, I'm going to New Orleans on Thursday and um, for our Stamping Up Leadership. This is the first time in three years that we've been able to meet and gather and all the people who have, you have to be a silver elite, gold or above to go to this. And 
It's going to be at the Marriott downtown in, on, I guess, near Bourbon Street. I've never been to New Orleans, so um, I have some dinner reservations made at some famous places. And then we have one night, all our lunches are with Stamping Up and our one evening, our final evening is with Stamping Up too. So we don't do any stamping. It's all just learning business and leadership, things like that. And um, you, we do card swaps, though. So I'll come back with a bunch of card swaps. Our first night we gather, it's called Sweets and Swaps. So we have an eat after dinner in the evening. We gather together and swap and eat dessert. Sounds fun, huh? Okay, that's it, friends. Thanks so much. I appreciate the thumbs up. If you have, if you have, if you're watching this on YouTube, please ring the bell and subscribe or like or comment. If you're watching on Facebook later on for the replay, like, comment so that you can also, um, I can invite you to join. That's all so important. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll have all the directions typed up both for Facebook and YouTube, all places, hopefully, but you have to sort of know where to find them. You have to click on the little arrow That's, and that will take you to the directions. Okay. Thanks everyone. See you next Tuesday, hopefully. All right. Bye-bye.